What's going on Guardians? For those of you who enjoy Trials of Osiris, we're going to bring you in-depth guides on how to use various subclasses effectively while competing for your fat Trials loot. And in this video, we're going to start with the Titan Striker subclass, which arguably has the best grenades of all the subclasses in the Crucible. So in this video, we'll talk about how you will want to spec your Titan and how you should use your super and grenades in a way that will give you the greatest advantage. First and foremost, let's talk about the balance between intellect, discipline, and strength. For the striker, you'll want to prioritize discipline first, intellect second, and strength last. It's entirely okay to have little to nothing buffing your strength stat because your melee ability will most likely be used maybe once per match in trials. Those T-Rex arms make landing melee attacks pretty difficult and uh, honestly not very advantageous. Usually you'll be using it to follow up a shotgun blast which means you likely won't even need a melee ability to help you. Just a standard punch will do. So your best bet is to have lightning grenades cool down more regularly. The lightning grenades in Trials are extremely useful for a number of different things. First and foremost, it's great to toss a lightning grenade to prime people around corners laying in wait with their shotguns. And here you see they're also great for finishing targets off who have run into cover. They can reach pretty far and you can see here in slow motion on the right hand side just how far back in this guy was when that 122 damage procced on him. Lightning grenades are also great for locking down opponent's orbs. So what you'll see in this clip here is that we're going to come up into the tube and gun a guy down at the bottom of the tube here on Exodus Blue. Now once he goes down, I step forward to get a revive and throw a lightning grenade against the wall so that if they choose to come through that alleyway to get the revive, they're going to get punished for it. They're going to get hit with 122 damage and that's exactly what happens and that's how we were able to get a couple of kills there to wrap up that round. Here I use the lightning grenade because I'm the last guy standing. I put it on the wall so that when they pursue me from that angle, they're going to take damage on their way inside the door. In this instance, the lightning grenade catches two guys, making it so that I'll, all I have to do is hit a body shot and for them to go down. Then I just have to go 1v1 and win one last gunfight, and it turns out in my favor. A major part of winning Trials matches is knowing when to use your super and using it effectively. Just because you have a super cooled down doesn't mean that you should use it. Each super has strengths and weaknesses. The Fist of Havoc Slam super is good at two things in particular, taking out opponents on a fixed location and shutting down roaming supers. Fist of Havoc can be used effectively to push heavy ammo spawns. Opponents gather there and open themselves up to a super attack. You may have to clean up a kill or two though, so be ready when coming out of Fist of Havoc to engage more. Use the third person camera to locate other players while you are mid super so that you can come out facing the direction you need to be facing in order to engage the next target. Also just note that Fist of Havoc is great for reaping Sunbreaker Tears, and those Sunbreaker Tears taste delicious. Ultimately, when it comes to using Fist of Havoc, you just have to remember that it leaves you very exposed. It's a very close quarter super, so you're going to need to close the gap by using all the horizontal and visual cover that you have available to you. So come around in a flanking maneuver, use your cover, and then you can drop your super a little bit more effectively and leaves you less exposed that way. When it comes to selecting your exotic armor piece for Trials, you have a few good options. The Crest of Alpha Loopy is a favorite because of the extremely quick revive time. You can essentially get a sprinting revive, which is awfully handy for when you need to replenish your numbers in a pinch. This helps you get a quick overshield that can turn the advantage in your favor pretty quickly. Unfortunately, the Armamentarium is not a year 2 chess piece yet, so we can't recommend that you sacrifice light level to use it. In theory, it could work okay if the rest of your armor and weapons are high enough on the light level spectrum to compensate for it, but I personally choose to use the Empyrean Bellicose for a number of reasons. It's a great choice for shutting down those pesky shotgunners who slide up into your grill. Jumping backwards and then using your primary to gun them down with perfect accuracy is a fantastic way of dealing with a shotgunner one on one. Sometimes I like to use my sniper as well. Bellicose opens up a whole new range of motions and ways of approaching engagements. You can't just jump straight up and hang there, leaving yourself exposed. It's kind of a bad idea. It's really all about creating new sight lines that your opponent isn't expecting. When it comes to selecting your jump ability, I highly recommend using increased control for those mid-air directional changes and the ability to get around the map quickly. It can help you get in and out of engagements much faster than the other jump options for the Titan. 
Finally, there are some striker features that all come down to personal preference. With the Fist of Havoc, you can choose between Shockwave, Aftermath, and Death from Above. I personally liked using Aftermath to keep opponents' orbs off limits for a short while after I killed them with the super, just in case anyone else decided to push in and go for the revive, but Shockwave is good for when you get caught in the open before you're close enough to use the super. You can activate it early and launch the Shockwave at your opponent. It's risky, but it sometimes pays off, and Death from Above can be great for more accurately placing your super from the air. But overall, I found Aftermath to be the most useful for the way that I play. Also, in the last skill tree, you have the option of selecting Unstoppable, Shoulder Charge, and Juggernaut. I would recommend one of the latter two. Shoulder Charge is good for mobility and those insta-melee kills, but it tempts you to be reckless. I use it more or less to build up momentum as I'm moving, but it gives out an audio cue so that your opponents can more accurately place you. Juggernaut can be a great trials choice as it is a little more forgiving if you're caught sprinting without your weapon ready. Ultimately, this just comes down to how you play and what you prefer. Neither one is a poor choice. And one last thing that I would highly recommend that you do is invest in the Aftershocks skill in the skill tree. What this is going to do for you is make the duration of your lightning effects, like your lightning grenade and aftermath from your super, they're going to last a lot longer. And that's really, really nice if you're trying to lock down orbs by putting a lightning grenade over top of them. And it's going to be nice if you want to deter people from getting revives if you leave an aftershock on a, on a dead uh, opponent's orb. That's something that's really going to pay off in some pretty nice dividends. So I hope that these tips have been helpful for you. If you have some tips to share, please do so in the comments section. The Striker subclass has been getting a little less love since TTK, but it's still a great overall subclass with some great abilities to lock down and control orbs and various choke points on maps, and that's how you really need to use this subclass to its greatest potential. This has been True Vanguard with Planet Destiny, and I hope to catch you in Trials.